Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on this wonderful uh, fall uh, day. As you can see, we are thrilled for many, many reasons. First and foremost, because you see kids in the background after a year of school closures, over a year of school closures, it's just been so wonderful to see our kids here every single day. And then secondly, we have the wonderful visit today of our wonderful state superintendent, Mr. Tony Thurman, who represents uh, all that's good in reopening our schools. The idea that we're not complacent, the idea that there's equity, the idea that from this point forward, kids get what they need in school as a result of his leadership. And so I'm thrilled to have him here. Uh, before introducing Mr. Thurmond, I'd like to welcome Mr. Ortega um, uh, to the podium to also remark on, um, uh, to welcome you here to the school. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Well, I just want to start by saying that we are honored uh, to have the opportunity to have Mr. Thurman and his team join us here at Rio Hondo School. It's a great school in a wonderful community and in a, in a wonderful district. We, we got the opportunity today to really highlight some of the, wonder, the wonderful lunch uh, meal program that we have here within our district and here at Rio Hondo School, right? And then in addition to that, we got to walk some of our classrooms and really show off and highlight you know, all of the wonderful learning that's being done in a safe manner, right? Um, so. Mr. Thurman, thank you, thank you and your team for joining us here today. Um, but really, I think we're all here to hear uh, from Mr. Thurman. So with that said. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ortega. Uh, before introducing Mr. Thurman, I'd like to give our board president the opportunity to also greet you. Our board president also represents the wonderful work and the leadership that's guiding the work here in the Almonte City School District. Lisette Mendez, our board president. Hi, thank you so much, Mr. Thurman, for being here today. It really just shows that the state is here supporting the work that we're doing as a community to service the students of the Monte City School District. We are really focused on just making sure that every kid is receiving what they need to be their true selves and to be successful. So thank you again for your visit and all the work you're doing to support. Thank you, and at this time, it is my distinct pleasure to really welcome a champion of all students, Mr. Tony Thurmond. Thank you, Dr. Garcia. Uh, thank you, uh, Board President Mendez, and thank you, uh, uh, great principal, uh, Mr. Ortega. Um, it's no mystery. The best part of this job um, is when you get to be out at a school. And when you're out at a school, you get the real. You get to know what's happening in our school communities, what our students and staff need. And in just a few minutes, I've seen some of the best examples of what's going on for education for our students anywhere in our state. And I'd like to commend the team here and thank them for their incredible leadership and commitment and this community doing great things. Um, this is the mighty El Monte community in a fabulous district and at a fabulous school. I'm proud of what I've seen today of the Eagles. <clears throat> the purpose of the visit was to focus on universal meals, but we got to see so much more than just universal meals. But of course, we are preparing all of our schools for the point where every student who needs a meal will get a meal regardless of their financial background. It won't be about paperwork. It won't be about whether or not they paid. Any student who needs a meal will get a meal. And now through Universal Meals, students can expect beginning in 22-23 to get breakfast and lunch. Um, and so we are ramping up this effort statewide to help our schools. Um, but what we saw at Rio Hondo today shows us it's already happening. Students are getting meals um, and, and at the rate of uh, just since March 2020, more than five and a half million meals served uh, in this community. It's an incredible thing. It shows that the school continues to be the center of what our kids need and our families need. And it's just a pleasure to see that. I got a good workout having the chance to serve some meals. I want to thank our, our classified staff who work with our kids. Um, these are hard times. Uh, everything is difficult, even in a meal program. If you think about it right now, the nation is experiencing a shortage of materials, of resources, of staff. Prices are high. And we've literally written to the U.S. Department of Education to ask for, uh, well, really to Congress, uh, to ask for higher rates of reimbursement. And it's really on the Department of Agriculture and U.S. Congress to provide higher rates of reimbursement so that we can reach this. Why is it so important? We all know if you're hungry, it's just harder to learn. You can still learn. It's harder to learn. I say that as somebody who grew up on the free lunch program. I grew up on, you know, what would have been today's EBT program, the food stamps program, and as uh, someone who ate a lot of government cheese. We needed 
food donations in my household to help us overcome poverty. Um, and uh, we didn't go hungry. And the most important public program in my household was getting an education. And we saw so many great examples here today. And so just know that right now we are going to be going to schools, yes, to celebrate their opening. Dr. Garcia, you're right. It is uh, so important during this time that our kids have access to social connection, direct connection to their educators, social emotional learning supports. But we also see this trend of connecting universal meals to things like universal TK, preschool for every single four-year-old. We're gonna be rolling out anti-racism grants in schools all across the state. We're gonna have expanded programs for after-school programming to support our students and families. Uh, we're gonna have more mental health. There's $4 billion in mental health uh, programming dollars. And of course, our community schools program. $3 billion of what are really wraparound supports, mental health, health, social services, but they're really transformational programs that can change school climates all across our state. And for those places that need to think differently about how they address social justice and racial justice, community schools will be that. And so it's just been great to be here today to see one of the great programs around Universal Meals in Action, to have a chance to spend time with students and educators, administrators and family members and leaders who are doing great things. Um, we look forward to coming back. If you all will have us, um, we want to lift up what we've seen today in this district and at this school as a great example of things that are working in our state and that should be replicated in our state. I'm grateful for what I saw here today. Um, we'll continue the messaging around Universal Meals, around vaccines, around supporting safety measures. Uh, for our schools. I, I loved all the protocols that we saw here for COVID mitigation. And so all in all, just a really great day. We saw a lot of great things in just a few moments and uh, proud to be here today. And all I can say is, uh, is uh, go Rams. Um, it's been a great day. Um, if, thank you. If you have any questions, we'll take them. Um, any of us can. Otherwise, um, we will let these good folks get back to uh, school and to classrooms. And uh, we thank you for today. Seeing that there are no questions, we'll just say thank you and uh, hope that you'll continue to follow us on this new you know, effort as we continue to visit schools, lifting up the importance of universal meals and how it connects to making California schools even better. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you.